to start our walk in front of the Piazza della Rotonda, in front of the Pantheon. Walk west to the Baths of Nero, rebuilt by Alexander Severus in the 3rd century, and then walk down south to the first bath complex in the Campus Martius, the Baths of Agrippa. The Pantheon really dominates our experience in this part of the Campus Martius today, but I want to take a look at two bath complexes. First, the Baths of Nero, rebuilt by Alexander Severus. It's a massive sprawling complex at one time. We won't see too much that's visible today. And then we'll go down to the Baths of Agrippa, rebuilt by uh, many emperors from the Flavians to the Hadrianic period into the 4th century AD. Again, not too much remains, but each one of these bath complexes had its own aqueduct, the first and foremost, the Aqua Virgo, introduced by Agrippa. This is the Piazza of the Pantheon. We're here looking at the Hadrianic Pantheon. And the uh, Pantheon is going to be hemmed in by structures on all sides. So we're going to be heading over in this direction toward the Baths of Nero that's also rebuilt in the time of Alexander Severus. Behind the Pantheon is going to be uh, the Basilica of Neptune and the Baths of Agrippa. And on this side over here, uh, running all the way down to Largo Argentina, you're going to have the structure called the Saita, which is an out air an uh, outdoor uh, open air uh, enclosed area, hence the term the Saita, which is going to be a place for voting when Rome is a republic. So I want to take you today to look at a couple of these bath complexes that also make up the neighborhood of the Pantheon. It's something that's a little overlooked. It's a beautiful day. It was still in the 90s. Uh, today, I will just give you a little update. We filmed Palazzo Massimo. You can see a good thread that I put out on my Twitter feed. I'll be sharing it also on Instagram. Palazzo Massimo is one of four museums that is in the uh, what they call the Museo Nazionale Romano, down the street from us here by Piazza Navona. It's Altamps. We, fin we, fin we filmed that. And today is Museo uh, Nazionale Romano Palazzo Massimo by the train station, which is extraordinary with frescoes, with mosaics, with statuary, with bronze statuary. So it's really incredible. We were there filming and we're going to be putting out a lot of uh, content. So what I ask you to do is take a look at uh, our YouTube channel, subscribe to that, the YouTube channel, share it. It's a great educational resource that we're trying to get to as many eyes as possible. People interested in history, students of history, teachers of history. And I won't be doing this part so much uh, going around the city of Rome but we will have a fundraiser at the end of the month where it's going to be a two hour extravaganza through the city. So I hope you join me for that. I'm just giving you a heads up right now because it's going to be a big deal for us at the end of September. Right now though, uh, besides me taking you in the classroom and giving you the a lecture, which is going to be running about twice a month, we're going to have weekly new videos. Let's go now and explore a little bit of this neighborhood around the Pantheon. So again, there is the Pantheon, but the Pantheon is in this part of the Campus Martius, which because of the insertion of the Aqua Virgo in 19 BC by Agrippa, who builds the first Pantheon in the 20s BC, you're going to be able to have secondary, uh, uh, well, we have the Bazar of Agrippa, which we'll get to, but we're going to have a secondary bath complex right over here. I'm actually walking through it as we speak. The Baths of Nero made in the 60s, which will then be either refurbished or restored entirely by Alexander Severus. I'm gonna go right over here to these columns. So although the structure is about 190 meters by 140 meters, it's not quite as big as the baths of Trajan on the uh, Esquiline Hill, overlooking the Colosseum. When we look around here, in the distance, there's our little bit of the Pantheon. We're now walking through what would, would have had changing rooms and palestras and hot rooms and cold rooms, the Frigidarium, the Caldarium, managed by slaves. This chunk right here gives us an idea of the extent to which this was a magnificent structure. So we're just looking at part of the entablature right here. In marble, it's a big block. And then we have two columns. This beautiful background, you know you're in Rome when you see something like this. 
the ivy drooping down. And you see these columns have been reconstituted, they've been refurbished and re-erected because they're not, and this one here is not, it's just fragmentary. It's not, uh, it's not in its entirety. So you fill it in with brickwork the way you do in the Basilica Ulpia for the Forum of Trajan. Let me see if there are any comments. Okay, great. So this is really where we go. This is where we take our students into a parking lot. It's gonna be one other thing that's awesome to look at for the baths of uh, Nero. We're gonna walk over to it. But look how spectacular that is. Baths of Nero in the 60s, rebuilt in the 227s, 227, 226 by Alexander Severus, who I did a big, uh, did a big selfie with him today. There's a colossal head of Alexander Severus in the Palazzo Massimo. It's about, I don't know, four feet high, something like that. Yeah, three feet high, big head. And he is the last ruler of the Severan dynasty. But he leaves his mark in the city uh, with the baths. You know, right past historic San Eustachio uh, coffee. We're still in, still walking through the baths of Nero and Alexander Severus. I think that's the best way to, to call it, given both of these names. Look where we are. And that is San Vivo di Sapienza by Borromini. And this is San Eustachio. Got a little video on my YouTube channel on San Eustachio. But we're going to make our way over here to a recent discovery in the 1980s. A recent discovery in the 1980s when you're around all these government buildings, you know, restoring and the case of uh, what they like to do to further the use of buildings that are pre existing is to go underground. And of course, you know how difficult it is and how you usually don't end up with an underground parking lot in Rome because you hit something ancient. So this labrum, this huge granite basin, which again gives you a sense of the scale of the Baths of Nero was found in this building. I actually was once at a talk in this government building, this Senate building, in the space that was created where this was unearthed. In fact, if you go around these buildings, you're also gonna find underneath the Pythornium, the uh, furnace where the slaves were stoking the fire, many corridors. But this is what happens in the end. The, the base is modern, okay? But this actual lovely labrum is from the baths of Alexander Severus and Nero. So was it actually even in use in the time of Nero? We don't know. That's, that's a possibility as things do get refurbished. There's a little bit of a crack right here and you see a little bit of a leak that's not supposed to be happening. But I, I love this fountain. It's great and it's cool and it is refreshing. And right here you can really see because it's wet just how beautiful this granite is. Gorgeous. So it's just a little walk in the city. Getting a sense of the grandeur and the scale of the little talked about baths of Alexander Severus and Nero. We're going to make our way to the other big bath complex, which is the Baths of Agrippa. The Baths of Agrippa are really the first. You can't really call them the imperial baths per se, because all the other baths that we talk about in the imperial period are made by emperors. Instead, this one is by the right-hand man at one time heir designate of uh, of, of uh, Augustus himself. And he dies about 12 BC, so does not succeed Augustus. But he really was like a co-ruler. And when uh, Augustus fell ill on a number of occasions, who got the ring? It was Agrippa. 
So all this vicinity, beautiful, very, very calm, very sedated this moment. It was a very hot day today. Could have been a great day to go to the baths or a great day to go to the beach. This weekend was packed with people, Italians mostly, but right now it's pretty, pretty relaxed. Kids won't be going to school for another week. And we'll just walk along the street here. Here we got our beautiful sky. So we've, we're heading south and east at the moment. We're gonna make our way to the Baths of Agrippa. So as we walk along, you can definitely ask questions if you'd like. Looks like there are no questions. So we're gonna head over to the Baths of Agrippa. This way, do a little zigzag. And right past the Santa Chiara. Just due south of the Pantheon. So, we think about the Campus Martius, the floodplain, the big structure, the monumental structure that looms large in everyone's mind. And the end of the Republic is Pompey's Theater, a little further south. That kind of got the ball rolling for bigger and bigger structures. But you're really rewriting the uh, urban structure in the time of Agrippa. He brings water into the campus Marcius area. He introduces baths, which are first called the Laconicum. So dry heat baths. And there's also going to be a huge uh, stagnum or pool. I'm just going to catch a, a glimpse right over here of the, uh, of the Pantheon. From this perspective, we have the Sanctimonia Sopra Minerva Church, which eventually is going to be replacing the Temple of Isis and Serapis over in this direction. And here again, we get this little glimpse of the of the Pantheon. It was circling around the Pantheon. Here's Bernini's famous uh, elephant obelisk. Here is our beautiful St. Thomas of Venera Church. And we are heading south. So hromlive.org got a lot of content to share with you this fall. So weekly new videos, up by weekly, we'll have some kind of a, a seminar. The full list through December is gonna be released, I think next week. But thank you for joining me today. It's Labor Day. Hope you guys have a great Labor Day. I labored today because we were filming in the Plaza Massimo. But uh, it's great, great weather, great time. Looking forward to kids getting to school. Fingers crossed on that. But uh, we'll see how that goes. That's the plan right now. So right over here. And as we turn the corner, it's going to be what we have that remains of the baths of Agrippa. So the baths of Agrippa are going to get rebuilt several times over, but the reason why it's possible is that you have the aqueduct, the aqua virgo by uh, Agrippa, and then of course, in this vicinity then we're in a whole uh, area which has this structure kind of sticking out amidst the modern structures. It's the basically the rotunda kind of core central area. It wasn't quite as big as the Pantheon, of course. It's gonna be rebuilt several times over. This is about third century. Take a look at it. And that's why as this curve continues all the way over here, we have half the half of the uh, cylinder. It's, this street is called the street is known as Donut Street, the Via Arcella Chambella. And you can see over here as well. This continues all the way over here. You can see the beginning of the rotunda. So what's left? that's incorporated into the urban fabric. There's a lot more that's preserved, just not visible. You can see kind of the telltale signs here of different periods. Of course, a lot of the facing of the brick here 
is missing. And of course, with the ground level is another 30 feet below us. So this is much larger than what it first appears. This is what we've got left of the, of the once magnificent Baths of Agrippa. I'm gonna zoom in on this. You can see some of the fabric here is actually has inlaid rows of bricks, kind of like a skeletal framework that they're now inserting into the fabric of the walls in the third century AD. And of course it is pretty spectacular to see it incorporated into these much later buildings and still visible. Here with these holes, the small bullet holes, we can tell that up to that level, it was also faced in marble. Those are holes from metal clamps or marble veneer. So that's really what I wanted to do today with a little neighborhood walk around the Pantheon. I wanted to expose you to two bath complexes that maybe or maybe not you're aware of. We know the Baths of Caracalla, the Baths of Diocletian. Uh, there are a number of bath complexes, but this one, these two are ones that don't get the same amount of attention. Of course, they're not as well preserved. Who does give us some documentation? Well, the Palladio probably has the best drawings of the Baths of Agrippa. So, of course, before the later urbanization has taken over, a number of people were able to draw a lot of those ruins. So we do have a lot of, of, of drawings from the 15th, at least mostly 16th and 17th centuries. So we actually have a much clearer idea of the baths, the extent of the baths and the ground plans than what we just saw today. But today is just a neighborhood walk. And I wanted to show you just with the, with the naked eye, not with a plan or a diagram, what is still visible. So I'm making my way down here, kind of walking out to the end of the site for the enclosure building 300 meters long. It starts up with the Pantheon, ends over here, which is the enclosure where you could vote. So, kind of in conclusion, happy Labor Day. Don't forget to register to vote. That's coming up soon. And we'll have more interim live for you uh, later in the week. We're going to be doing the Ludi Romani, which kick off on uh, September, I believe it's September 9th. So, more seminars coming up with regularity. We thank you guys all for your support. We thank those of you that are Continual contributors over the months. You're going to get special, uh, special seminars and visits and live streams just for you. So stay tuned for that later this month. We'll be setting that out. Thanks, guys, very much for for joining me. I'll leave you with a little view of Larga Argentina as the sun is setting. So this is uh, Darius, Angel Online. Thanks a lot.